Of course, the next big milestone after 14K is the all-time high, and that is very reachable next week if stocks don't do an about-face. Let's get right to it with today's Closing Bell Exchange. Tom Porcelli from RBC Capital Markets, Larry Glazer from Mayflower Advisors, Peter Schiff from Euro Pacific Capital, very own Rick Santelli as well. Tom, are you a believer? Are you a believer in 14,000? Uh, I, I, you know, it's funny. I, I know that we love to talk about these things on television. At the end of the day, I don't know what's That's why we're here. Yeah, what's the difference? Um, I, I don't think that uh, it's a ref it's necessarily a reflection of. Uh, an economy that's also gaining momentum. I think that the economy is more moving sideways at this point than anything. Uh, I think there are other underlying reasons for the equity market to perform as well as it has. And I think part of that, of course, is central bank policy. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, I know it makes for a neat little discussion, but ultimately uh, I'm, I'm more concerned about the economics of this. And the economics of this is we're moving sideways. We're so, not gaining much momentum. Right. And that's what we keep seeing, a very choppy situation when it comes to right. the actual fundamentals. That's right. uh, and it's really all about the Federal Reserve. And, and that's why so much money is moving into the market. I guess yep. the question is, do you think it's sustainable, given the fact that so far fundamentals really have not mattered? Uh, well, what does 2013 look like? That's the thing. So it's funny. I, you know, I heard a, uh, some equity strategists say, you know, uh, S&P 1700. Uh, and while fundamentally I'd love to toss that person out the window, practically speaking, I don't think it, I, I think why not? Why can't you get there? Because at the end of the day, we're not being driven by fundamentals. I think policy is uh, conducive for uh, the equity and indeed um, other distortions to be embedded in other markets. Peter Schiff, um, if this market is going to take that next leg higher, money's going to have to come from somewhere. Uh, you've said in the past you think there's a tremendous bond bubble building. When does it burst, and is that the form of the big money now that comes into the stock market to take it higher? Yeah. Well, first of all, you know, it's only sustainable, this 14,000, because it is an illusion. It's not real. We're measuring the Dow with inflated paper dollars. When the Dow hit 14,000 back in 2007, gold was $700 an ounce. So measured in terms of real money, the Dow would have to double to get back to where it was in 07. But as far as the bond bubble, it is going to burst. Maybe it's already burst. I don't know. There's a lot of air that has to come out. But imagine what's going to happen to the bond market when all the money that's in parked in bonds tries to exit for something real because people wake up to the inflationary threats that are out there. Uh, you, don't, you don't have the, the Eurozone crisis anymore. The Euro is making new 52-week highs against the dollar, as are many other currencies. So there's a lot of money left to come out. And what if the Fed, I think, I think it's all bluff, but what if the Fed tried to shrink its balance sheet and it tried to sell bonds, the public tries to sell bonds, the government's trying to sell over a trillion in treasuries every year on its own. So eventually when the bottom drops out of the bond market, it's a huge problem. I think in the short run, the Fed's going to print a lot of money to prevent that from happening. And so stocks can keep trending higher, just like the price of everything else. But stocks are going to not go up as fast as the price of gasoline, as the price of food, as the price of a lot of other things that rise when you debase your currency. So what do you think? you think it continues? you think 2013 means more money into, into stocks, given the fact that it's the Fed really driving everything? Well, money is good. money is losing value. That's what's happening. And people that recognize that are getting rid of their dollars and they're buying other things. It makes a lot of sense to own stocks than to own treasuries or corporate bonds, for that matter, or any debt instrument denominated in dollars. But I think smarter investors are going to look abroad. Look at what's going on in some of these emerging markets. Look at the Asian markets. Uh, look at precious metals. I think you've got a lull before the storm here in gold. A lot of the Wall Street traders are writing gold off. They're saying the rally is over because there's nothing to worry about. The crisis is over. That's not why gold was going up. Gold was never rising because of a crisis. It was rising because of money printing, inflation, cheap money. If you look at what was going on with gold from 2000 to 2008, gold was doing a lot better before the crisis than it did during the crisis. And the, re Rick, the way they papered over Maria, the crisis Maria, just, is by Maria, printing I, money, I, destroying I the value of currency. I, and so yeah, gold's going I, up, and so are stocks. I, God, Maria, I, I have to disagree with the Armageddon forecast here. I mean, first of all, I think milestones absolutely do matter. And if you look, big round numbers play really well on Main Street. When you go to a bakery or a barbershop, 
this weekend or in between the Super Bowl game, people are going to say, gee, did you see the market? And that gets individual investors re-engaged in the market. And I think that's entirely rational behavior. Look, let's call it for what it is. It's a momentum-driven market. It's driven by fund flows and not necessarily fundamentals. But that doesn't preclude Armageddon necessarily. You've got this worldwide currency issue. There's a lot of scary stuff yeah. in the well, world. Well, I, I bet I more people are going to be talking about likely. rising but, gas prices than rising stock yeah. prices. Uh, look, they've been talking about rising gas prices, and there's no question that the dollars are concerned. You know what they're more worried about? They're more worried about w higher chicken wing prices for the Super Bowl. That's what they're worried yeah. about. But now that, that conversation yeah. is going to shift back to the stock market because people want to make money. In 13 years, the market's done nothing. The bubble's gone. We've, well, we've they're not making money in stocks, bubble. but they're going to lose a lot less in stocks than they will in cash or treasuries. That's for sure. When look, you have inflation, if you, you run the retail but investor But don't mistake here. this for economic growth. The U.S. economy is in a lot of trouble. And the rising stock market doesn't reflect improving fundamentals. It reflects inflation and a debased currency. Yeah. I don't. I look. I look. Never bet on the end of the world because it only happens once, right? You hear that repeatedly. Why do you keep and saying I think the end of the world? Again, the argument Rick, is very limited. Rick. Rick. Who's Rick talking Santelli. the end of the Rick, world? Rick. Rick Santelli. Can you can you get in here? I mean, Peter Schiffen. You well, seem to have different opinions, right? Everybody's a little right? bit right, Judge. Everybody's a little bit right. All the major central banks of the old developed economies, even some of the just recently developed economies, well. They have central banks that have pretty much put a boundary around rational investors. As much as many of them like gold, they want some diversification. Where are you going to go? The treasuries are safe if you're really rich, if you're looking to accumulate wealth, and Peter's right, but it's still a mug's game no matter how you slice it. I agree with the guests that said the economy's sideways on fundamentals, but all roads lead to stocks. So whether you can right. come up with a quantitative argument or not, I would be crazy to challenge the direction of stocks as far as interest right. rates they're not fully buying into this they're going to creep up a bit but the bubble and everybody's right about probably isn't going to burst for years and the fed isn't going to voluntarily stop in my opinion so i don't think you have to worry about that with your stock trade in the right. here and now no i totally agree and look tom i'm the first person to say this this rally is 100 percent due to the federal reserve and the free money and the fact that there are very few alternatives but let's not forget, I mean, we got a jobs number out today that was better than expected, or at least it was in line with expectations and the revisions were better than expected. We got a housing market that has clearly turned the corner. And we have a corporate sector that is flush with cash, $3.6 trillion. So while, yes, I agree the economy is not showing any great shakes, we are seeing pockets of this story actually show real vibrancy. But, so this is a long conversation. I'll try to keep it really short. Uh, I think all the things that you've just described, fit very snugly into an economy that's moving along at a 2% rate. Which is what we are. Which is exactly where we are. So again, it, it, there's no momentum being generated. And at the end of the day, I think if you're stagnant, um, I, I, you, that has to work into your fundamentals. So uh, the job report is a great example. Um, the, with the back right. revision, You've got to buy the government's inflation numbers, though, if you think the economy is actually expanding. And by the way, $85 billion yeah, I mean, a month I, I, in QE isn't going to be enough to stop the bond bubble from no, bursting. No, but Maria if makes a good point, though. There is that, a little bit of momentum. They're going to have to step it up. You're they might have to raise no, I mean, There is, there is, there is a real momentum, a right? And that's there a lot is of real Peter, printed. Peter, listen one second. There, Maria is right. I mean, there is real right. momentum, uh, whether, it, whether it is with housing, whether it is with manufacturing, whether it is with construction, whether it is it with consumer spending, business investment. All of these little pockets have to mean something. No, but, but again, define right. for me momentum. They do. Uh, as a great example, Zero GDP housing. In the housing, quarter quarter. housing was a, a detractor from growth up until this year. This was the first year that housing contributed to growth contribute about two tenths of a percentage points to growth. Housing again this year will be a contributor to growth. It'll contribute probably about three or four tenths of a percentage points. So is going from two tenths to four tenths uh, momentum? A absolutely. But what's the degree yeah, of momentum, there's momentum that we're dealing with? It's what, stunningly, what is driving it's stunningly it? Where is it coming little from? momentum. It's coming from a pretty and to me, press. that's the compelling it's cheap part money. of the story. What do you expect? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what, well, Maria, I would argue here that this is that we should be having. Right. We, we do not right. have the Absolutely. kind of job growth, the kind of economic growth that one would expect at this point in, in the recovery. That's, That's absolutely uh, right. And we're never going to get the job growth yep. uh, as long as the Fed is stimulating, as long as the government is spending and regulating. The economy is never going to grow. All we're going to yeah. do is print money, debase our currency. You know, and yeah, you know uh, Maria, I would argue up, here, though, that it's that's not a also, good thing. you need to...
Peter, you need to check your ideology at the door in this environment and recognize that no, the I... Fed is way more, whether we like it or not, this is the world we live in and we've got to navigate it. No one well, asked me if I like well, the Fed hey, policy. I, I just right, got, right. And, no, no, let's make right. that the last that's word, too. Point. Let, let, Larry makes his point, point, right? It is what it is. Well, you, yeah, it well is you're living in a world, you should understand it. Yeah. You might like it, but you, uh, you, hey, you got to understand it. I don't disagree it. with that. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Great conversation. We appreciate it. Well, how's that for a wake you up?